Hi students, in today's lecture, we will go through two important terms, selectivity and reaction yield, right, in connection to multiple reactions. Multiple reactions we have done in the previous section where one reactant, right, is giving you one product which is desired product and the other product is your undesired product, right. So mainly selectivity and reaction yield will help you to determine the profits right because finally we have to see everything with respect to cost right so it will help you to save your cost once you know the reactivity and um, sorry once you know the selectivity and reaction yield right you can decide on the reactor type what type of reactor you should use so that you can have maximum of desired product formed in the reaction and minimum of undesired product right that is what mainly your profits right the more desired product you have the more beneficial it would be right so basically selectivity and reaction yield will help you to determine what type of reactor you should use right and what should be the reaction conditions Right, so basically these two terms will help you determine at the end reactor type right, to perform the reaction and reaction conditions. Right? When we say reaction conditions, under what conditions are we, we should perform a reaction so that we have maximum of desired product and minimum of undesired product. Right. So let's just see, there, there are some simple formulas of selectivities and reaction yield. Selectivity is basically, suppose we have reactant A, right? it is giving you desired product and it is giving you an undesired product through two different reactions. Right. So selectivity would be ratio of rate of formation of desired product divided by rate of formation of undesired product right we write it as rate of formation of desired product rate of formation of undesired product this is your formula for instantaneous selectivity right this is your instantaneous selectivity for desired product right desired product is your d right this is simple so we have done this in the previous lecture also if you remember while doing membrane reactor right membrane there we have we have learned little about selectivity if you want you can go back and go through that lecture as well now how selectivity will help us to determine the reaction conditions and the reactor type right let's just quickly go through what we have done in the previous lecture suppose we have suppose we have a plus b giving you d right then the same reactants right the same reactants when this reaction is occurring there is also one undesired product that is getting formed Right? Now rate of reaction, we know from chemical kinetics, rate of reaction is equal to K1, right? let's say it depends on concentration of A right? to the power of 2, right? which is your order of reaction, then concentration of B, product of CA square, then your CB. Similarly, rate of reaction of this reaction the other reaction which is forming your undesired product would be k2 ca say this depends on this reaction is second order for reactant b right so if you want to find the ratio this would be your selectivity right rd upon ru would be k1 upon k2 Right, you have CA square CB divided by CA 
cb square right now you have sdu k1 upon k2 ca upon cb right now selectivity right selectivity will favor one of the product which is your desired product now if you look at this to have maximum selectivity when we say maximum selectivity that means maximum formation of desired product to have maximum selectivity you need to keep concentration of reactant a high and concentration of reactant b low right because you can see from here your selectivity is directly proportional to concentration of a right k1 upon k2 is constant and selectivity is inversely proportional to concentration of c right so you have to keep the concentration of reactant a high always right and the concentration of reactant b low how you can achieve this because in the beginning i said that this will help us to select the reactor type and reaction conditions right so this kind of reaction wherein you have to keep the concentration of reactant a high and concentration of reactant b low so as to have maximum desired product and minimum undesired product what you can do is here you can use a membrane reactor membrane reactor what you can do is how you can keep the concentration of b low using membrane reactor right this is say a kind of a membrane reactor right you have a catalyst here you have a membrane here right this is your membrane so to keep the concentration of a high right in order to have maximum selectivity you have to keep the concentration of reactant a high right concentration of this high so you have to you will feed it directly into the reactor so as to have the concentration of a high and this b in order to have low concentration of reactant b what you can do is you will feed this reactant from the side right from the side of the membrane reactor it will this reactant b will go through the side through membrane it will go slowly into the reactor right it will go slowly into the reactor right so when it will go slowly into the reactor that means the concentration of b will remain low and concentration of a will remain high because if we are feeding it directly into the reactor right this is how using selectivity you can choose a reactor type and reaction conditions so as to have maximum yield of your desired product and minimum yield of your undesired product right and this will help you to save cost as well i hope this is clear now let's let's talk about flow re reactors what if you have flow reactors right we have something known as overall selectivity right so when we talk about overall selectivity you have this kind of sign on s then you have the formula for this is since this is a flow reactor right where your products suppose this is your flow reactor your reactants are entering from one side and your product are exiting from the other side right so here the formula for your over, your overall selectivity would be exit molar flow rate exit molar flow rate of desired product desired divided by exit molar flow rate of undesired product exit molar flow rate of undesired product this is the formula in case of flow reactors right why we are taking exit molar flow rate how many moles are coming out right of reactant and products of uh, sorry different products 
desired and undesired right and for batch reactors right selectivity for batch reactors we know that when we talk about batch reactors right in a batch reactor there is nothing flowing in or flowing out right you have suppose this is your say batch reactor you take a and b initially both these a and b will react to give you d right and they will also react to give you u right so at the end of the reaction you will see how many moles of desired products are formed and how many moles of undesired products are formed right so when you have batch reactor right in case of batch reactor you will look at the number of moles right of desired and undesired product at the end of the reaction this is the formula when you are using your batch reactor right i hope this is clear right now next in next coming lectures we will just understand how right how we can elaborate these concepts right in case of parallel reaction series reactions right so here we i we have just introduced you to reactor and uh, sorry selectivity and reaction re yield and how these two things can help us to achieve maximum of desired product and many minimum of undesired product through the selection of your reactor type and reaction conditions right by knowing the selectivity like this example we have already done right now let's look into reaction yield right let's quickly i'll just wrap this off just understand this that when we have flow reactors we would be looking at how much what is the flow rate of desired and undesired product because these products are flowing out continuously through the reactor right but when we have batch reactor there is nothing flowing in or out right so at the end of the reaction we know that react we mix reactants in the batch reactor right where they are in constant contact with one another for a long period of time right and after a certain period of time when the reaction completes what we will do is we will look at how many moles of desired and undesired products are formed right so this would be the formula for selectivity in case of batch reactors in terms of number of moles of desired and undesired product right so i just wrap this you can take a screenshot or just make the notes now there is something known as reaction yield right in reaction yield also we have similar kind of when we talk about reaction yield right remember we are more concerned with your desired product right so here we have rate of formation of desired product to the rate of formation of rate of reaction uh, rate of your key reactant this is your a is your key reactant right i hope this this thing is clear right rate of formation of desired product or reaction rate rate reaction rate of desired product divided by reaction rate of a which is your key reactant reaction rate of key reactant which is your a and why i have put negative sign here because a is a reactant and as the reaction proceeds we know the concentration of reactant will go down when concentration of reactant will go down we use negative sign to show that the concentration of reactant a is going down right now this is your reaction rate of given product right d and reaction rate of key reactant and this is denoted by yd 
Now for a batch system, this is denoted by Yd. Now same as we have done selectivity for batch system or batch reactor, reaction yield would be number of moles of desired product right? at the end of the reaction and below we have we take the number of moles of key reactant right reaction rate here we have taken reaction rate now reaction rate would be in terms of number of moles that are spent or the number of moles of reactant that have reacted right this is Na is the number of moles at time t Na0 is number of moles taken initially right and Nd is your number of moles of react of uh, product formed at the end of the reaction right so this is for your batch system remember for batch system reaction yield and selectivity both are in terms of your number of moles for flow systems For flow system, we have for flow system, we have we know that flow system is this kind of a reactor which is in the shape of tube. A and B you are feeding, D and U are coming out. Right? So flow rate of products we will look at. Right, so molar flow rate of of product D, right, which is the desired product, divided by molar flow rate of your key reactant. Right, so here it would be F A zero minus F A. Initially, you have you have spent F A zero. You are feeding F A zero at time T. When the reaction yield is say, uh, sorry, when the flow rate of reactant is Fd, the number of moles are Fa at time t. Right? So this is for your flow systems. Right? So I hope this is clear. Ratio of moles of product and for flow system, we would be looking at flow rates. Right. So, just remember selectivity and reaction yield. How it help us? How it helps a chemical engineer, right, to save cost, right, and to select correct or right type of suitable reactor, right, to perform a specific reaction, right, so that he can have maximum of desired product, product and minimum of undesired product. Right? This would be the main goal of chemical engineer to calculate selectivity right? so as to have maximum of D and minimum of U. Right? Remember all the formulas. Right? What we use in batch system, number of moles always and flow system, flow rate. Right? I hope this is clear. Thanks.